it's Mrs. Sebastian here again. Welcome to my art studio. This week we are going to delve into and explore pop art and we're going to be looking at four artists and doing five projects. I hope you will enjoy our very first artist. Hang tight for the end so I will have our uh, super interesting art fact of the day as well. Today we're going to be learning about an artist named Murakami Takashi. He's a Japanese pop artist. Pop artists love to take everyday popular things and make them into fine art that people can have access to. He was born in Tokyo in 1963 and received his Bachelor's of Fine Arts, his Master's of Fine Arts, and his PhD in art from the Tokyo National University of Fine Arts and Music. So where is Japan located? This little red dot that's about to drop down, bam, is where we are located in Florida. And then this circle that's about to fly in is where Japan is. So it is actually across the Pacific Ocean. In 2008, Murakami was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People. That means he is probably the top 100 people in the world that people are looking to and emulating and really um, appreciating. And he, is the, he was the only visual artist included on the list for that year. Where has, he, where has he shown his artwork? Well, he's actually in 2010, became the third contemporary artist and first Japanese artist to exhibit his works at the Palace of Versailles in France filling 15 rooms and the park with his sculptures, paintings, a decorative carpet, and lamps. A great honor to show here, but his work has been shown all around the world in many museums. Here's one of his sculptures here. It's interesting to note, this is a um, image of the artist here. Um, where artists get their inspirations from. Sometimes it's pretty obvious where they come from and other times it's not so obvious. Here's what he said about one of his um, inspiration artists. Only recently did I realize how much I've been influenced by Steven Spielberg. You may have seen some of these Steven Spielberg productions. He directed them, he produced many of them, and um, obviously there are a lot of fantasy elements in these that have inspired um, our artist today to, to make his artwork. One of the other things that has influenced him, I feel, is anime and manga. So this is one of his first artworks, Super Flat First Love. And in Japan, if it's a cartoon, it's called anime. And if it's a comic book, it's manga. This devotion to anime and manga and to the collecting of related merchandise is shared by a large community of fans referred to as otaku. That term in combination with pop, as in pop art, has resulted in a new term known as poku. So this is really what has been used to describe Murakami's recognizable artworks. They're very poku. All right, so now we're gonna be looking at his icon, which is a character that he created. And um, supposedly it was inspired by a monkey-like cartoon character um, that was created in Hong Kong uh, called Doraemon. Uh, and he would later call his work here Dob, Mr. Dob. So you can see he's put a D in this ear up here. The face is, would be the big O and then the B is on the other side. To me, as I look at Mr. Dob throughout um, Murakami's artwork, I see a lot of Mickey Mouse in it. Um, and you might see that as well too. But again, that is kind of the heart of pop art, taking things that are easily recognizable and making them different and creative. Of course, Mr. Dobb doesn't look exactly like Mickey Mouse with all those sharp teeth and eyes. But again, um, he, Murakami has taken liberties to make it creative in his own. So um, I know that we're familiar with a lot of the emojis or emoticons, and um, he has taken that idea and made self-portraits, supposedly, of himself, pictures of him, and added different emotions or feelings in it.
He has taken things from nature and has um, made them his own. Uh, I definitely see a lot of eyes in his artworks. This is an exhibit in a museum of his work as well. This one's called My Life, and I'd like you to think about for a moment how this artwork um, translates into his title. There's a lot of eyes. Um, these eyes also almost look like different planets to me when I look at it. Maybe he feels when his art is exhibited in other cultures that maybe it feels like other planets or maybe all eyes are on him because he is so popular and people are looking to see what his next thing would be. Or maybe you have a different interpretation and that's okay. That's what art is all about is seeing how it speaks to you. I don't know about you, but this reminds me a lot of Animal Crossing and maybe even in Pokemon where you can catch the shinies. And then being that this is pop art, um, you can even go and get plushies, stuffed animals, have t-shirts with his art on it. I've seen those at stores and malls um, with Mr. Dob on it. And you can have a piece of art of your own. Again, really um, honing into that pop art movement in the heart of pop, taking popular everyday items. And in this case, you can keep pieces of art he has made that are very economical, which um, don't cost that lot for, for you to have as well. I've even seen that his art has um, infiltrated popular culture in TV productions like Yo Gabba Gabba. And again, you can buy things with his art on it as well. And he's worked with famous designers to make things like uh, journals, notebooks, purses, clothing, uh, eyewear, watches, you name it. He's probably got his finger on it. All right, I'm at my studio desk and really all you're gonna need for this is a pencil and some paper. And if you wanna color it in, which is so important with uh, his artworks, then I would go ahead and have some markers ready. I think that would be best, but if you don't, colored pencils and crayons will work great too. And I'm gonna jot down a few things that I noticed when I looked at his artwork. I noticed that he had a lot of eyes in his artwork. I noticed he had flowers. Really, in general, just things from nature. He had, of course, Dob. Um, and he had a lot of faces and a lot of those anime sort of styles. So I'm gonna think about making an artwork that incorporates some of these into it. So, do I have to do flowers like him? No, I don't. I could pick something else if I really wanted to. Like, um, maybe I'm going to choose, maybe I'm gonna choose a bee. So I'm gonna think about that bee. So he's going to have a cute little big head and I'm gonna have his cute little body. And he's gonna have those cute, because he has a lot of circular or round forms. Uh, very organic and curvy. And then we've got to make it really cute. So we're going to give him two big eyes. And maybe I'm not going to do the traditional pattern in his wings. I'm going to make it something that I want to do. And then, um, you know, I could put some of those flowers in the picture. I could add some other bees if I wanted to.
And then I'll probably put some of those flowers in the pictures. And maybe even a few leaves. Why not? His art is full of lots of details. So make sure you fill in all those great little spaces. It's okay if some of the art goes off the edge of the paper. And now I feel like I'm ready to do some color. the background white or you could lightly color it in with a colored pencil or crayon. And we're going to call this one done. I love the playfulness. I love the bright colors. I love using things that we see outside or in our daily life to create our artworks. I think um, this artist is just amazing for doing that. All right, I hope you really enjoyed that pop artist. Remember, keep your art bright and colorful. That's the heart of pop art, I believe. Um, and be sure to be kind, love on your family, and keep on making great art. And now on to our interesting fact of it's the day. It's going to be on the Eiffel Tower, which was erected and opened in 1890 in Paris, France. The main engineer was Gustave Eiffel, but really it was 72 engineers and um, scientists 
that uh, finally got this wonderful structure uh, piece of architecture erected in France. Immediately, um, Mr. Eiffel was envied by everyone in France, um, not because he had made such a great monument, but because at the very tippy top of the Eiffel Tower, there was an apartment built in. Um, so everyone wanted to visit it. Um, it was owned and privately used by Gustav Eiffel, but he would invite important people such as Thomas Edison. Um, and many people have offered to pay a lot of money to spend one night in it. So that's your super fun uh, art fact of the day.